It is HBR, and I'm Dave Lawrence. Today we are welcoming a guy who is bringing his band to the islands for several dates, sure to please fans of the Grateful Dead or jam band scene. Steve Kimmock and friends are playing March 23rd and 24th, Thursday and Friday at the Blue Note, Saturday at the Honoka'a People's Theater. And Steve has played with everyone from Keith and Donna, Gene Gaucho, Bay Area Psychedelic Rocker Zero, Bobby Weir's Kingfish, Merle Saunders in the Rainforest Band. It's like a who's who of people connected to the dead or who have been in the dead. Phil Lesh and Friends to the other ones, Rhythm Devils, the band with the drummers, Bobby Weir's Rat Dog. This is just some of his many associations. We're welcoming him uh, for yet another association, and that is our guest on HPR's All Things Considered. Aloha and mahalo, Steve. Hi, Dave. Great to have you on board, and thank you for taking some time for us today. My pleasure. Before we get into this incredible history that you've got, paint a little picture of who's coming and what we can expect. My old buddy, Bobby Veta on Fender Bass. Jeff Comenti on the keyboards. Wally Ingram on the drums. And then how about the songs? With a background like yours, I can imagine you're drawn from all kinds of sources. There's obviously a couple of Dan or Garcia-related things in there, a bunch of my own music. And I mean, you never know where the material is going to come from. It could be an Ali Akbar Khan tune. It could be a Wayne Shorter tune. It could be a Beatles tune. You know, it's like whatever we feel like playing that day. Very unpredictable show. Certainly maintains that Grateful Dead reference point. Anybody who's uh, had any familiarity with your work or taking a look at your background, clearly the dead has factored big into it. When were you first exposed to them? Maybe early in high school or something like that. Friends would play it or people would be at parties and put it on. And I didn't get it. Just it didn't make any sense to me. The people didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> I was listening to Black Sabbath. You know, like <laughs> it wasn't until a little after... Uh, the Europe 72 record came out. Somebody played that for me. I heard Garcia live, and I was just astounded. Kind of immediately embraced that. Two bands with uh, very distinctive guitarists. Certainly Tony Iommi, nobody can take away the incredible pioneering <laughs> aspect of what he brought the world. When did you first see uh, the dead? Closing of Winterland. It looks like the first Dead-related gig was Keith and Donna Jean. Yeah, Keith and Donna. How'd you get that to happen? The phone rang one day. The female voice says, is this Steve Kimmock? And I said, yeah. She says, Steve Kimmock, the guitar player? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. She says, this is Donnie Dodger. And I knew who, knew who she was. And she said, come down and play with me, Keith. So off I went to the great consternation of the jazz players that I was hanging out with at the time. When did you first get the opportunity to meet Jerry Garcia, who I have read considered you to be a, a guitar player he really appreciated? Well, you know, while I was playing with Keith and Donna, some of that playing we did at the Old Grateful Dead studio, which is a club front. I met him there. We sat and played about, talked about stuff and guitars. That was cool. And he says, well, play me something. Like, what are you into? And so I start playing the jazz chords. He makes this look and he rolls the eyes and he goes, elevator music, you know. <laughs> and having started with the late Keith Gaucho as your first dead man, you meet Jerry. How did you hook up with Bobby Weir? I was offered an audition for Kingfish. It was kind of a one-off show, you know, maybe one or two shows or like that. And I had to go to New York to do the gig. I went all the way to New York to SIR from uh, California to, like, try out. And we played, and we were just like, oh, well, like, this is going to work. So we've been uh, sparring ever since. Yeah, and he's still... And enjoying it. There's, and there's, there's, there's some more of that coming up. I like working with that guy, and he's always got... He's got always so much good music around him. You know? You're very lucky. You've had a, a lot of experience with him, and as you said, still still more to come. When you look at all these cats, and uh, you've gotten to uh, end up working with Phil and in the other ones as well. I guess I saw you with the other ones. You were, must have been... Did you do the tour in 2000 where you guys ended up in Boston at the Fleet Center? You had Ziggy Marley opening? Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. That was a... Uh, it was fun. What, what's your... Do you have favorites of, of any of those experiences? They're all such different ensembles, but some of the characters are familiar. Well, the Phil and Friends thing, more than any of those other bands or projects or whatever, it, it could be very different people at different times. In hindsight, maybe the best of those was the one we did with, with the Fish Guys at the Warfield. I thought that was a really good one. How much time did you get to spend with Jerry, and were are there any enduring memories? Oh, <laughs> do we have time for a story? Yes, we do. Okay. To start off, let me just say, I, I didn't spend an awful lot of time with the guy. It was abundantly clear to me that he was overpeopled and did not need 
one more person <laughs> knocking on his door because, you know, even at that point, if somebody was calling him off, you know, it was like, hey, can you do something for me? I'll do a little brown nose and then you'll fix something for me, that kind of thing, you know. And it's like, it just bugged me the extent to which he was just like surrounded by a nut magnet, basically. Right. Anyway, somewhere back in the 80s, there was this Soviet American walk for peace. They came all the way across the country from New York to San Francisco to sing ended up in San Francisco in Golden Gate Park at the band show. And there was going to be this big gig with all the local musicians and a house band. Like, the, basically, the core band was Zero. Your band Zero, real fixture on the San Francisco Bay Area scene for a while. Anyway, Garcia is supposed to play. So we're up there playing, and out of nowhere, man, the entire place goes nuts with applause. And I'm looking around going, what the hell happened? And I look to the back of the band shell, and these steps are coming down, and Garcia has just appeared walking down the stairs with the guitar. And they're going really slow. Every step they take, people are plodding louder and louder as they get to the stage. Finally makes it to the stage, on the opposite side of the stage from me, and walks all the way across the stage with his guitar in his hand, Jerry Garcia, right? And his amp is right next to mine. So he walks all the way over to me, starts to plug in his guitar, and the stage manager comes up and says, oh no, man, one more song before Gary. Got to this giant, laborious entrance, right? So Jerry's supposed to leave the stage. <laughs> and his idea of leaving the stage is to walk the three steps from his amp to the other side of my amp and stand there with his guitar. So he wants to play this one more tune. And then... Jerry's supposed to come up, and so he walks past me to plug his amp in again, and he looks at me with this little smile, and he says, hey, hey man, don't make me look bad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, after all of that, the little voice and the humility and kind of self-effacing nature of the thing completely broke the ice, in that case, with Jerry. He just knew what to say. Just one little funny, you know, quip, and it's like, bam! The whole thing was set right. On stage together. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was neat. Steve Kimock, coming with Steve Kimock and friends, and that's going to be on Thursday the 23rd, Friday the 24th at the Blue Note, Saturday 25th over at the Honoka'a People's Theater. And maybe we'll come down and hang with you while you're in town at the Blue Note, record a little thing. Absolutely come down, man. Hoping that you travel safe. Appreciate you being on ATC Great. with us too, man. My pleasure, and thank you very much for the support. Aloha, this is Steve Kimock, and don't even think about touching that dial because you're listening to my good friend Dave Lawrence.